Okay, so thank you all for coming uh, for this uh, uh, half tone number nine that we are launching today. So uh, since our in inception of um, half tone, we are still committed on uh, publishing three numbers each year. So we are on uh, number nine now. So uh, before I pass the the uh, I pass the ball to Alan, I just want to say again that. Um, uh, I need to thank uh, our sponsor, BNU, uh, that allows us to um, have a, a good number of um, initiatives every year. Uh, and also, in the case of today, Fundação Rui Cunha, because we are having this magazine launch here at the uh, Rui Cunha Foundation, uh, with uh, very good facilities, actually. So, I will now pass the the time to uh, Alan Nguyen here, who is today representing the editorial team. Uh, so, Alan, please. Yes. Uh, and here. Okay. So. Oh, hello, hello, hello. So, first of all, uh, as an ad uh, editing team of the this half -tone magazine, I'm saying that. It's quite uh, amazing that we have uh, nine issues all together. You know, because in scene cultures, uh, many they have a myth saying that uh, any scene uh, wouldn't last longer than three issues. But we have done nine <laughs> so far. It's already passed like three years time. And still we have receiving many interesting projects all along. For example, like in here, we uh, in this issue, we received six different people sending their photos uh, to, to us and each of them have uh, many different interesting ideas as well. So some of them are not just documentary but also we have abstract uh, photography as well. So it's very interesting to see in each new issue we have uh, receiving different interesting project as well. So uh, now uh, we would like um, the Photographers to introduce their portrait as well. So we start with Andres. Maybe. No, actually, uh, before yeah, is okay. a. Yeah. Okay, please. Yes, yeah. please come here. So I will. Uh, you want me to help you flip oh, the image? Just, or just you start? Just pass it for yes, please. Right now. Yeah. So just two arrows? Yes. Yeah. So basically, what I'm doing is shooting oysters. But why? Yeah, uh, like many students here, I'm just a foreigner <laughs> from mainland China in Macau. Uh, the first question come to me is why Macau called Macau? So I, I come back to the history. We all found the Macau used to called as Aumen Haojing Haojiang. It means uh, the river of oysters because it has a very large uh, farming oyster industry in the history. But due to some environment issues, uh, the, the industry is just uh, go away. So what I'm doing is taking this oyster, which uh, will all come from Macau's river. Uh, I think the, the things I'm doing is just uh, from uh, uh, people from the mainland China in a traditional Chinese paintings way to seeing uh, what is the Macau relies on used to used to be relies on. So I took the oysters and uh, you can see here is a crab here and in a very low uh, viewpoint. So the the small oyster will become a uh, huge mountain in my view. So basically you can see it's different kind, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to say, it. it's kind of like fantastic uh, mountains in the rivers or in the, I don't know, the, the, uh, or just a, a forest, right? And as you can see, these oysters and some kind of different uh, animals, small animals here. So that's all. Yeah. Okay. It's a very brief introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So.
So our next presenter will be Andres. <laughs> yeah, Richard. Thank you. So today it's a special occasion because it's, it's um, a lot of people are not in Macau, so we are actually only only two members presenting. But anyway, the the magazine is here. So the the project I'm presenting today it's called the the life of a road cyclist, which is a, it's actually a self-reporting project because um, to give you some background, I'm. I'm I mean, photography is, is my passion, and cycling, road cycling, is also my passion. So this project actually combines both my, my hobbies and my passions. And uh, the thing is, um, to give you some background, I started cycling around four years ago during the COVID days. And, uh, and cycling is a sport that I take quite seriously. I train on a daily basis, and I have a, a personal coach. I, I join races in Macau and also overseas. So it's more than a sport to me. To me, it's a lifestyle. Uh, but whenever I'm cycling, uh, the photographer in me, I'm always looking for opportunities. So um, I cannot bring a camera with me because I need to go out as light as possible. So I started shooting with my iPhone uh, just, just for, for my own record. But after getting this selection of photos, I decided that I could do a something, you know, for, for half tone. So the, the idea for this project came out and um, basically um, through my photos and some short paragraphs that I wrote, uh, the idea is to uh, tell the viewer uh, what I feel and what I go through, what is my experience as a cyclist and, and what's so special that, you know, makes me dedicate so much of myself. So. I, I have four parts. You can read the paragraphs if you have the time. Uh, the first part or act I call cocoon. So basically, you know, every morning I start my day uh, with a training session. And, uh, and that's before I go to work, before I take my kids to school. And, and then soon I realized that's a very beautiful part, beautiful time of the day because there are no cars in the streets, there are no emails, there are no phone calls. So I feel totally isolated. Uh, it's just myself, you know, my bicycle and a beautiful surrounding. And um, soon I realized that depending on the season of the year or the, the time or the weather, you get different levels of brightness and colors. Right? So. So these photos w was all about capturing what I go through, what I feel. And the funny thing is that even though it's a very physically demanding exercise, it's, it's so peaceful a as well. Yeah. And um, a friend of mine, he is a lawyer and um, he is also a cyclist. He once said that um, sometimes he wished he had a notebook so that when he's cycling, he can jot down the ideas that come to his mind. So that's what we go through. So the second part, I call it adulation. Um, you know, if you have friends that are cyclists, probably you've seen photos of their bicycles in social media. And there's a reason for this, it's because we are Cyclists are totally crazy about their bicycles. Um, it's, a, it's a bit like photographers with lenses and cameras. You know, we have this obsession and uh, we don't mind spending our money, you know, to get the best equipment that you can buy. Uh, the first photo you see here was, on this one on the left hand side was taken in, uh, in Haksa, just before the, the sunrise. And um, you know, I took many, many, it took many attempts to reach this final photo. And I, I deliberately underexposed to, uh, so that the colors would be stronger. Uh, you can actually, the sun is just right below the horizon. And uh, then I started painting with the, with the lights of the, of the bicycle. So you can see that actually the front light is pointing downwards. 
supposed to be pointing forwards, but I it's pointing downwards so that the front wheel would pop out. And then with the rear light, I, I decided to paint the frame, you know. So the result became quite pleasant, at least to my eyes. And the second one is actually more like a snapshot. I was um, on my way to Kuluan on a very grayish, cloudy day, and all of a sudden I see those yellow traffic blocks. So I decided to just stop and take a photo. But at the end of the day, just going back, um, we just love our bicycles. So, so therefore, I mean, I, we all of us, we, we all take photos of our bicycles because it's, it's an obsession. Now, what, what we do actually, um, we, we want to ride our main intent. We want to ride as fast as possible for as long as possible. That's, that's the main objective of a cyclist. And therefore, uh, we are quite competitive, you know. Uh, either when we are riding with our friends or it, when we are riding alone, we always want to prove that we are stronger, we are better, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, mental games and psychology going through. Because Macau being a, a small place, actually, it's funny because on the, on the local races, you know, we race with all these people that we, we know because it's a small community. And when we are training, we all train more or less in the same location. So. I was thinking the other day, in a way, it's like you have a boxing fight on the weekend and during the week, you know, you train in the same gym, you know. <laughs> so you, you see all these people with whom you will be cycling against and sometimes there is some hostility. But in any case, you know, um, I think there is also a lot of uh, mutual respect because there is a sense of belonging that we all belong to the cycling community. So. Basically, we just want to uh, show to other cyclists that we are better cyclists. So, and uh, we are competitive and we go to extremes. Now, lastly, is just, um, I mean, what it means physically. Um, this, this one in the Upper left corner are, are the only photos not taken with the iPhone. This was taken with the Insta360 camera, it's the 360 degree camera that was mounted in front of my bicycle. That's actually a, a, a video footage, a, a screen capture. And I deliberately picked this photo to, to show my ugly face. Because this is how you're supposed to look like when you're cycling. You know? It's like... Um, marathon runners. They, they never look good they are, because they're always suffering. If you see a cyclist that's smiling, then he's not cycling. You know? he's, just, he's just pretending, right? So this is how you're supposed to look. And uh, what it does to your body is actually amazing because you, you know, you feel pain in your legs, you feel pain in your neck, in your shoulders. So uh, you're short of breath, your heartbeat is very high. So all, every signal you get from your body is telling you to stop, you know, because it's a intense suffering. But, but then you, you need to, in your brain, you need to tell yourself, keep going, keep going. You know. So, so this, is, this is what we do. And, um, and also, you, you, I mean, you can have accidents as well, right? So uh, that's, that's actually my right hand uh, after an accident. I, I displaced some bones in my wrist, so I had to uh, go to acupuncture. Uh, my left hand. Left hand. Left hand, yeah, my left hand. And, and these photos here are not actually not me, it's a friend of mine. Um, he, um, we were training together and then all of a sudden he disappeared. So I, I had to U-turn and see, you know, what happened to him. And I saw him covered in blood. He had an accident. He broke his uh, collarbone. And 
What was a bit sad is that that, that was his second accident in a year's time. Just before that accident, he, he broke his uh, elbow. So after four months of recovery, you know, he, um, he was okay, he came back to cycling, but he was no longer the same person. And, and uh, he was just traumatized, and eventually he gave up cycling. So, so it's, a, it's an extreme sport, it, it puts our um, physical strength to extremes, but also mentally it can be, uh, it can be very exhausting. So this is my, my presentation today. So the idea again was to, through my photos, to self-report what I go through. So thank you. Okay, so anybody have any question regarding of these two projects <laughs> to these two photographers? Yes. If not, then maybe we can uh, flick through. Yeah. If you want to just. Yeah, sure. So. So uh, this is another project about the, the Cantonese drama as well. And so this is by uh, Jose Luis. Jose Luis. Charles yeah, Charles Luis. Yeah. Yes. And uh, in here, he's in the backstage of the Cantonese opera. So. He take a lot of pictures about the actors as well and the actress as well. So this is some of them. So, so okay, this is another documentary project of, uh, of Joanna. So uh, she's taking the pictures of uh, I think it's in the United States, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is more uh, about the community in the. I mean it's black community in the United States. Yeah, so this photo is actually interesting because the beside the, the traditional black and white photo, you can see some of the color photos in here as well. So she deliberately um we want to mix them mix together in the ed editing process. So you can see uh we have the black and white as well as the color pictures in here. Yeah. And this is the abstract projects we are talking about. So it's not like the traditional documentary project we see in here. So it's quite interesting to see some new things uh, which we present in this uh, half tone magazine as well. Yeah. Personally, I like this project very much because it's quite interesting to figure out what is missing. Actually, it's more like uh, what's missing in this project than what you actually see in the photos. Yeah. Yeah, so. And the last is uh, Cecilia's project. It's uh, actually the, uh, it's an old project about the web balloon. So I uh, travel with the web balloon with different peoples in all around in China. So this is the documentary of the process as well. So see this. Yeah. Yes, I think that's the sixth project we introduced in this half tone issue. So also we. Uh, I think we will be starting our next is next issue as well. So if anybody are interested to uh, send me pictures, please feel so. And we yeah. are looking forward to receive all of the Half Tones members' new projects as well. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. So before we we go, uh, just want to say a, a few words that um, we've been uh, having quite an interesting year. Uh, we had just ended our um, exhibition at the uh, the Portuguese consulate residence. Let me put this. Yeah, and uh, it was quite successful because um, we there was a, quite a good number of attendants because uh, ever since the uh, uh, social media page, uh, Chinese Facebook page, actually, they started reporting the uh, the this exhibition and in the last three or four days of the exhibition in the official residence of the Portuguese consulate according to the security guard uh, we had hundreds of people every day you know 
And uh, f funny enough, you know, most of the people, they were, they, they made uh, very positive comments about our exhibition, but they were also happy that through our exhibition, they were able to visit the, the residence of the Portuguese consulate, the galleries. So a lot of people have never been there. So uh, in this sense, uh, we had some um, very good exposure. Now, uh, coming up, we, we will uh, have um, in the month of December, uh, it, uh, together with uh, IRTM, uh, the, in the Caho uh, Gallery in Kuluan, we have uh, uh, an exhibition that we call the small format exhibition. So there is actually an open call ongoing. So I re just to remind the members, uh, you can submit the proposal until the end of this month, uh, two photos, small size. We are talking about uh, the, la the largest uh, dimension should be uh, 42 centimeters. So we're talking about small size exhibition and uh, it's, uh, it's meant to take place in uh, September. So the end of the open call event, end of this month, and then uh, from September 1st until September 30th, uh, the exhibition will take place. The idea is that uh, the theme is uh, whatever the member decides, and uh, also you can put a price tag because uh, we, we would like to uh, say maybe 50% of the price of the of the of the selling price, we uh, we uh, give it as a charity to uh, IFDM. So, so that's that's the idea. I hope. Um, I mean, I, I I have to work on my proposals as well, but I, I hope you can you can do it. And uh, and secondly, um, I just want to disclose that I've been in talks with um, one of the casino hotels in Macau. Uh, I cannot tell you which one. Uh, but it's in Kotai, uh, in the Kotai Strip, uh, and it happens to feature a, a, a French monument. So they, <laughs> they have some uh, uh, free retail space. Uh, they are working with some uh, local art institutions, and uh, there's a possibility of us having also some works there. So uh, I think very soon I will, I will share with you in our... Uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp group groups. in the members group. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for this. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Members, don't forget to take your half tone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. What's the date limit for the number ten? Uh, don't have a limit. Uh, no, we no. haven't started though. We, we haven't started, but I think we will soon. We will send an email. Yeah. Yes. But John Bala is not in Macau currently, so yes. he will in charge of that. And we will, we will send you in the group. Yeah. Will be this month? Uh, sorry, this year? This year? No, no, this year. This, this year, year, yeah, this year. sure, sure. Yes. This year, this but year. maybe not in this month, I think. Yeah, fourth quarter yeah. of. Uh, yeah. Probably November, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah probably. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you you guys can uh, no no you can prepare mm. your <laughs> finally <laughs> finally promise <laughs> thank you very much thank you thank, thank you. you yeah okay okay, okay. Good.